Thank you, Robin, for your kind words and warm welcome. Moving on to the first keynote speech on future of mobility, I invite Sawan Singh, managing partner, global head of mobility, Frost and Sullivan, to join us. Over to you, Sawan. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to Intelligent Mobility 2020. My name is Sarwan Singh. I'm managing partner with Frost and Sullivan. Um, I normally joke I have two jobs. My day job being managing a very talented team of consultants and analysts who work on the future of mobility. And my evening job working with a small team of futurists. And we look at the macro to micro implications of some of the big mega trends of the future. In my presentation today, I'm going to try and bring both those jobs together. I'm going to start with what are the big transformation themes that will impact our lives, our businesses, our cultures, and our society, and what the implications are those to the automotive. And I'll then walk into some of the big trends and technology implications that we will see, including some mega disruptions over the next 15 to 20 years. So this slide captures the six big mega themes that are impacting us. The big one, as we all know, is COVID. Uh, and with COVID and some of the work that we've done on transhumanism, which I'll talk about a little later, we see a big impact and a big shift towards health plus mobility and these two industries converging together. Anything that moves in the future could be autonomous and the car very much becoming an element of a connected living solution. Likewise, what we will see is our society becoming a lot more heterogeneous and we'll see the maturing of the Gen Z as customers. So we'll see car companies becoming a lot more aligned to developing new products for the Gen Z customer. This slide talks about the next six transformation themes that we see, and we will see the growth of data as a 21st century oil. We already talk about it's not about horsepower, but it's about computing power, and absolutely we'll see that in cars in the future. We'll see payment gateways in cars. And one of the most exciting ones is on the bottom right hand of this slide, the China Belt Road Initiative. It's a game changer with trillions of dollars being spent on building infrastructure, especially road and rail infrastructure. We will see some big implications to freight mobility, including personal mobility. Those containers that take 35 to 40 days to come to Europe from China via sea route will take 15 to 20 days or even less in the future. Let's look at some of the mega technologies that will impact in the next few years. And I wanna start with 5G. 5G will be one of the most exciting technologies that we'll see in the short term. If you are as old as me, you may remember those 1G phones. If you carried one of those, you did not need to go to the gym. You would burn 2000 calories just carrying them. As we move from 1G to 4G, we move from analog voice data <clears throat> to video streaming. And with 5G, what we see is the bandwidth going up to one gigabytes per second, latency improving 50 times, and 5G will bring what I call machine to machine communication. There are going to be a number of use cases of 5G, but 5G is very different from 4G for a number of reasons. Firstly, 5G is more about B2B cases as opposed to 4G and 3G, which were more B2C use cases. So the need of having an ecosystem to roll out 5G is absolutely critical. We also see huge opportunities for 5G in the auto industry and mobility. You know, I joke normally that 4G created uh, Uber, which is now a $100 billion company. Likewise, I expect 5G to create perhaps a half a billion or half a trillion dollar company in the future. We in Frost and Sullivan are doing quite a work around 5G use cases, and we have identified about 20 use cases for 5G in vehicles, and we, can, we have segmented them into two key buckets. The light blue box indicates the connected and convenient services that are being offered on 4G, LT today, like online entertainment, insurance telematics, video streaming, and many others. The dark blue boxes show the seven other use cases that require data download um, and latency. When it comes to deployment, we expect two-speed commercialization of 5G. Initially, the automakers will deploy the basic services like firmware over the air updates, prognostics, advanced mapping solutions, and will not entirely use the low latency benefits of 5G technology till middle of the decade. 5G is exciting in the sense it will bring in vehicle to vehicle and smart traffic management solutions. We, I'm based here in Dubai and we've seen some interest from the Department of Transports here in Middle East where they want to look at 5G use cases in highways of the future. 5G will also bring edge computing, especially far and near edge, uh, which will be exciting because mission critical functions will happen in near edge in the future. 
while we're talking about 5G, let's not forget that 6G is around the corner. If you read the news recently, only a couple of weeks back, China actually tested a satellite which will enable 6G communication. So what will 6G do? Well, it will do all the things 5G do, but at a much faster speed at, and will enable quantum communication and will also bring in satellite conjun in conjunction with cellular telephony. As much as we see shift from 4G to 5G and 5G to 6G in this coming decade, we'll also see shift from industry 3.0 to industry 4.0 and eventually industry 5.0 within the auto industry. We talk about Kaizen, which is a phrase used and developed by Toyota, which is about continuous improvement. And that's been the mantra of manufacturing in the auto industry. What I see going forward is Kaizen moving on to Kakushin. What I mean by Kakushin is revolutionary improvement. And this will also enable more collaborative industry value chain ecosystems, which are digitally connected. And I like to talk about in particular case study of Volkswagen here on this slide. And I like to highlight two particular IIoT and IoT platforms that Volkswagen is developing. In particular, I'll focus on the one on the left here, which is what I call a mega marketplace that Volkswagen is building. It is set up as an open marketplace model, so partners can expand. And at the moment, the main founding partners are AWS and Siemens. It will link over 1,500 Volkswagen suppliers, and it will bring all the 122 plus sites together, and it will harmonize and make production and manufacturing a lot more efficient. It will be enabled through a new business model. In other words, it could be very much possible that Volkswagen does not even spend a penny to build this platform. As very recently, recently the project leader at Volkswagen mentioned, this industrial cloud and mega marketplace will become the app store for our manufacturing. On the right-hand side is the Volkswagen new operating system that they are building. And there's some interesting developments when it comes to operating system. In the past, car companies have stayed away from building software. But going forward, I believe that building operating systems and software will be very much in-house by OEMs. As you see on this slide and some of the work that we have done, the OEMs are starting to build their own proprietary solutions. We expect Daimler, Volkswagen, Tesla already does it and even Hyundai building their, these solutions. I would not be surprised even if the Japanese companies like Toyota build proprietary solutions in the future. At the moment, we see Android Automotive, and especially with the US companies, becoming an increasing market share as an operating system in cars of the future. Moving on to COVID plus mobility. Um, as we all know, and I am hoping, we will have the vaccine available by next year, and some of these things will be in the past. But I believe COVID, especially when it comes to future of workplace, will have a lasting impact. Our team uh, recently did some work on future of workplace, and we segmented future of workplace around three key areas, the future labor force, the future place of work, and the future of workplace technology. As, this, as the pictures on this slide tell you an interesting story, the future labor force will be very heterogeneous. The future place of work will be hybrid. So you might be working from the comfort of your sofa with your pet by your wayside. Now, what does this mean when it comes to automotive? Well, one of the trends we have picked up is, you know, we will see what we call suburbanization. Uh, again, I'll give the example of my home city now, Dubai. Uh, the rents and property prices for villas in the suburban areas in Dubai have gone up, whereas property prices and availability of flats is actually increased. So there are a lot more emptier flats in Dubai city. And that's because people are moving to suburban areas. In the past, we have seen, for example, in Europe, we almost have 80% urbanization. So is the case in Africa and Asia. So we see a trend similar to what we have seen in the US, the growth of suburban areas. So areas around the outskirts of cities or in daughter cities around big mega cities in the future. This means it will have a profound impact. So as we've seen recently, uh, the, there has been a pent up demand in the US for pickup trucks. So we'll see different types of vehicles being used. Used car market has gone up because people don't want to use public transport for commuting. And also we see this role of the car changing. The role of the car in the future might not necessarily just be commuting from A to B, in terms of work, but also for other things, mainly maybe perhaps being used uh, in weekends and for other uh, uh, recreation activities. As a result, we expect the car to become very much an element of what we call a connected living solution. 
So car will integrate all the elements of your home, of your workplace and the surroundings in it and will enable machine to machine or vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure communication. In my next section, I'd like to talk a little bit about health and mobility. Um, we have a dedicated healthcare team and in the last few months, we have been cooperating and collaborating to look at what healthcare and in particular health wellness and well-being means to, uh, to the car of the future. We've also done a very interesting study on transhumanism, which I'll talk about. So firstly, what we see a big shift in healthcare is that the anytime care, the internet of medical things happening. So healthcare is in your home, it's in your body, it's in your clinic, it's in your hospital, it's in your car of the future. And what is interesting about the human body is that the body is a data engine that is measurable in an infinite number of ways. So some of these measurements of your body can be also put into the car of the future. I mentioned our work on transhumanism. We broke it, broke it down into multiple ways and we looked at the evolving human body, the human experience, the human thought and human behavior. In particular, in this slide, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the evolving human body and in particular in terms of body augmentation. In the coming years, technology will usher in a number of body augmentation capabilities that will enable humans to be smarter, stronger and more capable than we are today. Variables, variables will be one form of body augmentation, but they will far surpass the fitness trackers of today. We could see even increased use of implants. These body augmentation capabilities give, will give rise to humans that are more resilient, optimized, and continually monitored. This could mean a thought process will be much faster and more transferable. Both wearable and implantable brain machine interfaces are being developed from organizations, including Elon Musk. I would not be surprised that eight, 10 years from today, some of these brain machine interfaces are interacting with the car, already an area of growth. Today, when I speak with others, I'm limited by the speed with which I can speak and work and words on the tip of my tongue. When I interface with a computer, I'm limited with the speed I can type. BMIs can change all of that. And in future, BMIs will be able to interact with car of the future. So gamification and behavioral science will increase human productivity and we'll see application of these in cars of the future as they will need to provide extreme personalization and customization. So some of these things that you see on this slide is some things we will, like, we will start seeing happening in cars. And in particular, when we talk about health, wellness, well-being, and some of these transhumanism features, we'll start seeing them built in, bought in, or beamed in into the cars of the future. And if I just expand into some of the built-in features, you can see here, you could boot a heart rate sensor in the seat belt. You could have driver drowsiness warning. You've seen an increased interest in OEMs putting ionizers, ozonizers in cars. Not only technology that purifies the car, but also helps in cleansing and sanitizing the surfaces of the vehicle, for example. So there will be an increased interest in health, wellness, well-being, and these health, wellness, well-being features in cars, especially as we move towards autonomous features, because that 20, 40 minute ride, you can do more out of that car. In my new section, in this next section, I'd like to talk about the next disruptions in the auto industry. Let's start by the biggest disruption that I see, which is the development of skateboard and rolling chassis architectures when it comes to electric and autonomous vehicle. Rolling chassis is nothing new. In the commercial vehicle industry, it's already being used. You take the body of the vehicle, you take the base of the vehicle and you build different bodies, or as we say, multiple hats. This is exactly what we will see in the car industry. We need this because we need to increase the range of the electric vehicles. We need to optimize the architectures. And we also need to be able to build multiple vehicles on the same skateboard, which provide both ownership and usership model, including commercial vehicles, and passenger cars. Now, what is interesting, and we will talk about this a little later uh, in the next couple of days, is the new business models that this is bringing. It is changing the dynamics of the tier one auto industry. We see different models from Bosch and Bentler, which are only pushing the platform, or companies like Re, who are also developing a holistic system strategy and licensing their technology, all the way to companies like Waymo, who are developing a fully integrated mobility player strategy. In terms of disruptions, uh, in a very recent piece of work, which again was an amazing piece of work that the team did, we identified over 2000 dynamic startups which are disrupting the auto industry. And it was amazing where and how these startups are coming in. Uh, in particular, we've seen an increase in startups in Asia, in particular startups in India, even in markets like Pakistan, we found are very 
are valued quite low and have huge potential for growth and expansion in the future. And in particular, when we looked at what are the next generation of disruption we'll see from startups, we expect a large number of these will be in the logistics sector, in particular in freight matching, last mile delivery, and using SaaS models. One other area which I like to talk about, which we did discuss during intelligent mobility last year, is the development of urban air vehicles. A recently completed study from my team shows that this industry ecosystem is fast expanding and is working at a pace much faster than we expected. There are over 100 companies, as you can see on this slide, across the industry ecosystem that are working together to bring these vehicles to market. And in particular, we've also seen an increase in types of applications. Of course, the first generation of applications will be on the left-hand side of this screen. So more military, air ambulance, or security, or surveillance applications being used. But some like recreation. So you take our next holiday and you fly over 30 meters from the, uh, from the sea level is something that might happen not in the near, in, not in the long, fu long future. In my last slide on this section, I'll talk a little about Tesla and Tesla's disruptive strategy and what differentiates them and what this means in terms of learnings for the auto industry. We did a very thorough detailed analysis of Tesla strategy and we broke it down into seven key elements as you see on the bottom of this slide. I like to highlight maybe the three key ones. Um, so the first one, and I mentioned that already a bit earlier is the development of a ground up operating system. Tesla has its own operating system. It's already always had it. We believe, and this is what we are seeing already, is a Volkswagen is very hard trying to develop one, is most OEMs will develop this as core competency going forward. The second key one is this chip system architecture. T traditionally, you know, as much as when it comes to electronic hardware, the OEMs have actually bought it as opposed to building it. And we've recently seen Daimler tie up in NVIDIA. We believe in the future, the chip system architecture strategy is going to again be bought in-house and will become core to the business. And then of course, as you've seen with Tesla, is that million miles warranty is lowering the total cost of ownership with some of the announcements they've done in backward integration with battery and cell technology. We believe, especially as they foray into commercial vehicles and bring in a bigger, wider range of vehicles, they will very much operate very aggressively on the TCO model. In other words, what we see is car industry companies building a highly integrated business model. So Tesla is an, also an oil refinery because it makes its batteries, and it's also a petrol station because it runs its own charging station. Very similar business model also to the controversial Nikola, for example. So what we expect that more and more companies will benchmark this going forward and build these type of business models in, in the future. That brings me to my conclusion of my presentation. Um, first, I like to talk about how we as humans are testing the new dimensions of altitude and speed when it comes to mobility. We now have, we are testing altitudes, which is even sub below uh, sea level, for example, with hyperloops. We're testing speeds where we are going at over 500, 600 kilometers an hour. We're also now taking that space between zero and 10,000 feet and developing solutions. So we'll have mobility even in those areas like drones for deliveries, for example. So if I had to summarize what could be the four future scenarios of mobility, this would be my summary slide. In the next four years, we'll see multimodality of mobility. So we'll see more uh, multimodal solutions, ride hailing solutions coming into play. We eventually see IoT platforms and platformization of transport. So integrated multi-mobility solutions using one platform, one smartphone to pay for it is something we'll start seeing. And then post 2026, when we see level four and eventually level five car come in, we'll see cars becoming a lot more smarter than humans. And that's where the usership models will start growing more using autonomous vehicles. Post 2035, we, start, we will start seeing new dimensions of mobility, like I mentioned, and you could have a trip from Tokyo to New York in less than four hours because you'll be flying over 100,000 feet. With that, I end my presentation and thank you again for listening to me.